In today's video, we'll be finding out what happens when you put dry ice into a plastic water bottle. Then we'll be playing a good old fashioned game of ring around the exploding dog dookie. Plus making the dangerous lab version of elephant toothpaste. And more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. Crazy mother. Now I wanted to just say at the beginning of this video not to try any of these experiments you're about to see at home. We had safety experts on site during all of these experiments. So although what we're doing may look very dangerous, we've gotten all the safety stuff completely figured out. And not to mention, in addition to these things being incredibly unsafe for you to try at home, they may be even illegal depending on where you live. So again, just don't do it. In today's video, we're gonna be finding out exactly how many dry ice bombs it takes to blow off Jack's head. But before we could explode any soda bottles, we decided to have a soda drinking contest. So this is gonna be a pretty accurate Organizing part of this challenge. On your marks, get set, go! Wait, I gotta do my clip really quick. Oh, never mind. Uh, uh, you guys. Uh, uh, Jay, I say that you probably oh, edged me out painful. on that one. Uh, it's painful. Oh, I'm surviving. Maybe I am the winner. Jack's over here vomiting. Jack, how you feel, bro? How you feel, Jay? These guys are dying. So that's oh awesome! God, Sprite, are you kidding so me? much carbonation, dude. You <laughs> dude, just came right back up. Well, you can tell these guys haven't done an eating challenge for quite some time. <laughs> time to crack the ice. Perfect. The next step is you gotta fill it up with water. That should be good. Right. Maybe even a little less. Perfect. Wait, then you're supposed to put the water in Where's after, the cap at? Now you just throw a shitload in and close it. Where's the Grab cap? The right okay, perfect. You wanna do it? Uh, no, it's fine. Just, yes. Yeah, quick, yeah, yeah seal it up, seal it up. You're Go. good, that's enough. Oh, oh no way. Oh. Oh. oh my god. That was, that awesome. hurt my that was epic. That was loud. The next idiotic thing that we decided to do was take more exploding plastic bottles and throw them into a box of plastic balls. And then we would all stand around in a circle. All right guys, so we've been exploding a bunch of stuff and we're basically gonna try to win a Darwin Award, as Jack put it. We're gonna stand around the box full of balls, we're gonna set one of these dry ice bombs in it, hopefully we all have our limbs intact after it's over. Only to my surprise, they decided to put a giant piece of dog poop right on top. All right, everybody get, you gotta throw it in deeper, bro. Dude, put it on the bottom. Shit. Oh, get up, get up. Check it on that side, dude. Go, go, go. Oh, and there's dog turds. And there's dog turds! There's dog turds! Check it around. Check it around. Oh, no. You got the poo spackle! There's dirt! There's poop all over me! There's poop all over me! No! Feeling lucky to have survived yet another trip over to Jack's house, I decided to grab my dry ice and get the hell out of there. I then headed back to my place where I would try to create a slightly safer version, which is still dangerous enough that you can't do it at home. So what we're gonna be doing now is trying to make some very low pressure dry ice bombs. The ones that we were using over at Jack's house were incredibly dangerous. I would definitely imagine that one of those would like take off your hand if you were holding it. But that's largely due to how much pressure those bottles can actually hold. A soda bottle is meant to hold carbonation, it's got a really tight seal and it's made of pretty thick plastic, and that's what makes it so dangerous because so much pressure builds up before it bursts. So I'm guessing hypothetically if you were to make a low pressure container, then the explosion would be more just like a pop, which is kind of what we're going for here now. However, we are darting into uncharted territory right now because I've only made a few of these and the results have been kind of surprising so far. But that being said, what I'm gonna try to do is use these two plastic cups. I've got this one filled up with warm water and there's a hole in this one. I'm gonna try to tape them together, drop a piece of dry ice in the top and then tape that shut really quick. And hopefully the pressure will build up enough to where it pops but doesn't build up so much that it destroys my entire apartment. I'm a little bit worried but we're gonna give it a shot. All right, now I'm just gonna pour the water in really quick and then get the hell out of the way. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Made like a little fog machine though. I don't know, that's not bad for an at-home experiment, I guess. But let's see if we can make something more dangerous. Let's try with styrofoam. Ugh. <sighs> 
Uh, I've tried several things at this point. Nothing's really worked yet. So I'm gonna see what happens if I put a big piece of dry ice into a grocery bag that's filled with water and then tie it off. I checked to see if it was airtight and it appears to be, although there could be small holes in here and I wouldn't really know. Okay, all right, let's just throw this big chunk in here. Okay. And it's just peeing now. The bag's just peeing. All right, and that's, that is a low pressure dry ice bomb for you. It just pees on your apartment and then smokes a cigarette when it's done. Okay, now that I've cleaned up all that water, I'm gonna try a slightly thicker bag. This is actually the bag that the dry ice came in. This is gonna pop. There's a tiny little pee stream coming out the side. Oh, okay. <laughs> that burst. I was gonna say there's like a tiny pee stream coming out the side. That was kind of cool. It was really scary though for me having to hold this thing while it was doing that, but I figured it couldn't have burst that much. So it was gonna be a weak point at some place and, and there was. Ah. Okay, a little hot potato with some dry ice. The next science experiment I wanted to try out was the lab version of elephant toothpaste. It shows the reaction between hydrogen peroxide, potassium iodide, and soap, which is just a boring way of saying that it shoots foam all over the place. So just in case you couldn't tell from the safety glasses and gloves, this is another one you should not try at home. What I'm gonna be attempting to do is the lab version of elephant toothpaste. Now there's an at home version that you can do with mild results, but what I thought I'd do is concoct my own lab version of this and hopefully we can get elephant toothpaste to just completely explode out of the ceiling. Never done this before, so I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work. Okay, so the first step is to take some potassium iodide, put it in water and mix it up and hopefully it will dissolve. I was told I'd need to swirl that up a bit until it all dissolves. Now we're gonna be using this as our catalyst, so I'll basically just set that aside. For the next step, I'm gonna be taking 35% concentrated hydrogen peroxide. And this stuff is basically poison, it will burn your skin. Uh, I'm guessing that's enough. I'm really just eyeballing all the ingredients here, so hopefully it doesn't uh, backfire on me, which it almost definitely will. The next step is to put some soap in it. And just for fun, they say you can put in some food dye. So I'm gonna make some green elephant toothpaste, hopefully. All that's left to do is put in the catalyst and should have some kind of eruption here. Well, it did something. <laughs> that was more like the at-home version, to be honest. But it is making a lot of foam, I'll give it that. reaction I was expecting it was pretty close. That looked more like the at-home version though. I bet if I were to use more precise ingredients instead of just eyeballing it, I would have probably got a more dramatic result. So we might want to try this one again. So <clears throat> we're gonna try that again, only this time we're just gonna eyeball the ingredients a little bit differently. And we're gonna be using the power of bleach. No, I'm just kidding, this is actually just a bleach container, but that's what we got, that's what we're going with. Right, last time the potassium iodide mixed up really easily, so I'm thinking maybe we should have had more of that. Now, adding in a hydrogen peroxide. Add in some soap. Then we're gonna add in some red food dye. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, yeah! All right, yes! I'm stoked that actually did something. Yes. There's just something that's really oddly satisfying about that. This one seemed to work a hell of a lot better. Whatever I did was just awesome. It's just never gonna stop. Oh my God. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. That was definitely a lot more like the lab version I was going for. I mean, the thing is still spitting out elephant toothpaste. I think that's pretty cool. It may do this for hours. I have no idea. <laughs> but one thing that does suck is that I've got all of this stuff all over my wall now. Uh, I'm gonna have to paint that now. Well, that was exciting. I'm definitely glad that that worked. A lot of the chemicals I was using to do that are actually very dangerous though. So I'm really just glad to be getting out of this with my hands intact and still in one piece. That being said, we are on to the next air. If you enjoyed this video, I made a playlist full of cool science experiments that I think that you'll definitely enjoy. Make sure to give that a watch. And I'm always up for a good challenge, so make sure you leave me your dares and suggestions down below. Make sure to like the video if you've yet to have done that. Subscribe and bell me for notifications. I'll be seeing you guys as soon as possible with a brand new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.